And we're back here into the lower bracket of last chance qualifier for TI. It's game three in an elimination series between Na'Vi and Extreme Gaming. Extreme Gaming following a similar script uh, against Infamous. Losing out game one, winning game two in a, a long drawn out affair with some heavy farming patterns from Lou and God's game three now draft started and already underway. Yeah, I'm curious to see what kind of adjustments are made. I think game two was one that was very much winnable for Na'Vi. Uh, but it does feel like they're going to head a different direction regardless. Um, I think just a bit more in the kind of realm of their comfort zone when they go for this Shadowfin clockwork. But once again, we're seeing this, this Nyx Assassin. It's top priority. Um, it seems to be the kind of key ingredient for both of these two teams in extreme gaming, taking advantage of having first pick. Yeah, having that vision, that ability to scout, start the, the team fight, stun people up. And clockwork fulfills a, a similar role, right? Yeah. Remaining. It's kind of a, they went for Tusk game game two, but this time around they decide maybe Clockwork just a bit better when it comes to vision. Uh, you can use that Rocket Flare, of course, uh, and, you know, maybe a bit more better synergy when it comes to being paired with the Shadow Fiend. Uh, Cogs into Requiem pretty handy. And Extreme opting to go for that Death Prophet again. Yeah. Uh, I, I, like, I like the way you framed it in the previous one. It gives them the identity, the, the ability to push towers with an Exo. Yeah, it just feels like, comfort zone now at this point and you know they they they're a team that seems to struggle to kind of Navi's find a way to like build a, a, a team fight and a, a draft that kind of makes cohesive sense and death profit just just makes that process a little bit easier so uh not surprised to see them kind of Extreme up the kind of priority of death profit into this first phase yeah now some respect coming out for v2 drow ranger taken out even with the flexibility there of the shadow fiend still opting for it and an Ancient Apparition ban. Wow. They're not considering Morphling. That was already banned, but just, you know, the Death Prophet with the Siphons and stuff, I feel like they, they must feel like that's enough and warrants an, hmm. an AA ban. I'm curious if anything else heal-wise they would want that maybe suggests banning AA, but... Yeah. They saw the Huskar in their previous series, and they're thinking, yeah, let's, let's have a go with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it didn't. It, it kind of worked, but until it didn't. But I don't think Extreme Gaming is going to be personally busting out a Huskar here doesn't really you know suit their way of playing Dota yeah I mean is it uh, do they want to add some more healing into this draft and Chantress or or a Chen or something like that and in yeah, fact what, what's happened be. to Chen he's just gone off the side of a cliff during last yeah. chance qualifier hasn't he it's just puppy and seems secret of playing him um yeah it seems like the rest of the teams just can't seem to make the hero work quite as effectively Ten seconds uh, I don't. I, I. I just don't think we'll be seeing it. Um, I guess potentially Five extreme gaming could get it. Like you know, they, like if that maybe is why they banned the AA. If they have some kind of yeah more team fighty healed lineup, five man mm. death ball kind of I, idea with their draft. But I think that's maybe a bit too overkill and yeah, too all in. Yeah, it's like they they do like the ancient, uh, even like the treant from time to time, but. And we'll see what they decide to do. I mean, Bris Bristleback might be one of those heroes out there as well. He does not like playing into Ancient Apparition. Yep. We could see that as like a tempo play from Extreme, where they've got DP Bristle and running around, creating chaos in the first 20 minutes of the game. Oh, there we go. All right. There's Chen. Yeah. Solo getting his hands on the Chen. Like, oh, you banned AA from me. Okay, I'll, I'll take advantage of that. Um... But we'll see where it does end up because Clockwork's often kind of in that five position role. But I think this game, yeah, you are looking at more four position and Clockwork, but that, that can make the lane a bit awkward. It could force you into some kind of double melee lane. Um, the Enigma's already banned out. Maybe you just have to use the Clockwork to kind of pull waves if you are going for double melee and you don't get a chance to contest it. Uh, and that can lead to someone like Lou having a complete free farm game. And we've seen that Extreme Gaming seem to be at their best when Lou's just free farming and kind of taking the game late. Yeah, build up that no earth, get get super big. A snap fire from extreme, gonna give them even more team fight here. So nice to have a, a pairing of supports that can basically go and kill people on the map whenever they want to, when they yeah. get level six. Just means they can go greedier with these cores now. Like you've got Nick Snapfire, Death Prophet already has heroes to play with. They have ways to get kills. So if you pick two greedy cores here, um, you know, you can still do stuff on the map while they're farming. And do you, do you still want to keep the flex with the DP? Because it feels like that's, that's a paparazzi hero now, kind of locked in. This yeah, fourth I, pick, usually you want to keep hmm. things open. I guess you, yeah, as far as like picking your carry now goes, we'll see what it is. They're going to go slider, so yeah. They say screw the flex. You know, everybody thinks it's going to be a, a mid hero. We'll just 
<laughs> Confirm it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Why the hell not? But Slaughter has been comfort for for old eleven as well. Um, and he played, I think, one game of the Death Prophet, but it just feels like extreme gaming. Are like, okay, this is do or die elimination. Game three decider. Um, you know, they've had their back against the wall multiple times, like you know, against Infamous when they lost game one. So um, it seems like some of their adaptations from game to game and going back more for a bit bit more in the comfort has uh, paid off for them. It's felt previously that you needed to keep the DP flex in case of like mid matchups. For, for example, a Shadow Fiend matchup mid, yeah. where previously it was kind of unplayable for DP because of the raises. But now with Spirit Siphon doing the flat damage, DP is actually not that bad against your SFs and your leaners anymore, it feels like. She's actually able to, to stand in lane. Yeah, and I think particularly when you have some good active supports, which Nyx oh, Assassin yeah. is one of the best, like, you know, this SF can't play two aggro. Chen is not the best rotating hero. The Clockwork can try and match, but we'll see. Na'Vi, TB. TB with SF. Na'Vi seem to be one of the teams that are doing a bit more of the magic SF compared to some of the other teams like Extreme Gaming who are all about the right-click build. So this may be a bit more kind of spellcaster SF and now TB giving them that late game strength here. Great pick against the, the Slardar, of course. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, having TB, Chen, so much pushing strength here from Na'Vi. A decent amount of team fight from Clockwork and the Shadow Fiend, and with a, with an off laner still to come, they can add even more to that as well. Is, is Beastmaster still? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be looking at like banning Beastmaster. <laughs> Get rid of him as quickly as you can. Tide Hunter though is the option okay. first from Extreme. Yeah, maybe just looking at Navi, feeling like they don't have much team fight. Um, you know, you pick this TB, but like, how do you actually team fight around the Metamorphosis and? Um, when you've got SF Chen Clockwork, like, yeah, your Clockwork initiates in, but where's, there's no follow-up. There's no remaining. big AoE ulti. So I think Extreme Gaming just trying to Five make sure that their draft remaining. ends up with the kind of the team fight advantage with this Tide ban. All right, yeah. So in that case, would you rather like a, a Mars ban over the Beastmaster from Extreme? I think so. I, 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 don't, I mean, Beastmaster is definitely annoying, and the, the vision it gives, the tempo you can play with Beastmaster SF plus Chen is Extreme very Gaming's scary. Time. Um, it kind of gives, I guess, just comes down to what they feel like. I, I, I just feel like the Navi picking TB is less about the push and more about like, hey, we're going to be in another 50 minute game because that <laughs> that seems to be how this patch plays out, and particularly these two teams and what's happened so far. I think the teams are just like, yeah, we're going 50 minutes again. Let's just pick hard carries. I, I love the fact they're banning Darks here, <laughs> even though they yeah. see the slaughter. Yeah, you can potentially shift things around to do what you want. Uh, there's that Beastmaster ban. So, yeah, leaving Mars in the pool, there's still good options here as Na'Vi to build their team fight around the Terra Blade. Yeah, Extreme Gaming have to kind of tip their hand a bit first. So, they'll be giving Lace kind of the counter pick here with last pick. Not every day you see the last pick off lane, but given the way this draft developed and I think how much Na'Vi wanted to emphasize picking TB, it, it does make sense. Like nowadays, how do you deal with TB? Because we, we used to see that kind of PL TB matchup be a, be a bit weird. Void is the ban from Na'Vi. Yeah, bursting TB before he metas is obviously, uh, sorry, before he sunders is the best way. They've got some good damage, but they're going to go their own TB of sorts. <laughs> they got Naga. Damn, this is, uh, they seem so going to go 50 minutes, they're going to go 60, 70 minutes, it seems. Oh, yeah. 90 minute game incoming. We saw this, uh, I think it was game three against Infamous, just absolute perfection from Luz Nagasaya, and it was, it was a real beautiful game to watch where they were able to control the map very nicely, uh, especially when you've got a DP on your team. If you can claim a couple of those early tier ones, give Naga even more space to cut waves and, and close the map in around Na'Vi, it can be difficult to break out across the river. Like, TB needs farm, SF needs farm, so you are absolutely now require a hero that can play with Clock, play with Chen and Shadowfiend to... to to, to fight, to scrap yeah. and brawl. Yeah, it's a very tricky spot to, for Navi to be in. Like, they have the team fight offlaners, or they have, like, the try and get the tempo heroes that play really fast. And they go for kind of a bit of neither. They go for greed. They go for some AoE. They want to actually more directly address the Naga. They pick up Timber because they their draft does lack damage a bit. Like, SF is good, but it's maybe just not quite enough. So they want to throw in more because Naga's one of these illusion carries that just gets super tanky and hard to kill. Not to mention there's also a Death Prophet you've got to try and kill. Yeah, they've got lots of armor now, don't they? Yeah. Uh, Chen's going to be buying armor items. V2 and Lays, of course, innately through their skill set and stats have tons of armor for themselves. Well, I mean, Timber can kill off illusions, but oh yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting one for sure. 
this this Navi draft is so passive. Like Timber TBSF, like this Chen. This poor clockwork. It's yeah, Chen. It's like this clock's probably looking around like, uh, so what do I do for the first thirty minutes? Like, what do you do in any phase of this game? You're just literally a vision hero. Tank some smoke gangs, give vision, stack some neutrals. Navi Apply just want to. Yeah, they just want to farm it up this game. Extreme gaming, like, yeah, they've got Naga, but like, I think they just have a balanced drop because you, you touched upon it with the Nyx Snapfire. They can kill anyone. They can make plays. Death, Prophet, Exorcism. You take Towers, you take Roshan. Slaughter plus DP, that's a lot of minus armor physical damage. So um, I think Extreme Gaming have the better draft here, but if this game becomes too passive and both teams are too scared to make moves, suddenly Navi's draft looks just fine because they're not being punished for their greed. As long as they can find those pockets of farm on the map for their three cores. Yeah. And it does look good as the, the game drags out. But here we go. Game three of this best of three. It's all come down to the wire here between Na'Vi and Extreme Gaming. Elimination on the line. And one team can progress through that lower bracket to face off against Liquid in the next round. As we do have a little pause to start out this game. Both teams are going to be having the pep talk, figuring out where they want to go, what lanes they want to have. Uh, are there any lane swaps you would expect in this one, or is it going to be straightforward setup? Um, probably straightforward setup. I think both these carries generally want to just play in their safe lanes, like Naga TB. You get into some weird lane swaps, and suddenly you end up like, you know, in the enemy off lane with no creeps coming to you, and yeah. So, so I, I think just standard, but we'll see for sure. Oh, well, out we go. <laughs> Extreme on this radiant side, smoking up. <laughs> It feels like a, it feels like they played Dire like every game I've cast of them. <laughs> it looks weird seeing XG on Radiant side. There's Navi over on the Dire. Might get a run out here, VTunes TB. Leading out is PYW Nyx. The smoke breaks. A couple of pings from Snapfire. And they want to try and scout again with old Eleven smoke now. And look, they're skirting around the edge of the outpost. Smoke breaks, solo, a Chen, going to get spotted, but the rest of Extreme have already removed themselves from the situation. It is just old 11 up here at this point. Yeah. I think the good news for Navi is, like, any lane Timber gets is going to be good. Like, you don't worry about lane swaps, because whether it's Slada or Naga, you feel like you've you've got a good lane. So this Timber pick definitely, you know, it, it makes sense on some level. Like, it's a great Timber game, but as far as what Navi's draft now looks like, you kind of feel like, is this really the kind of draft we want in a Game 3 decider? But the, the pressure is going to be on Extreme Gaming to make some of those mid-game plays and find these big team fights. But Paparazzi's Death Prophet has been really solid for them so far, and he needs to put up another oh, yeah. big game here. Kind of interesting that... Oh, yeah, that, that top lane Observer Ward, actually, actually down bottom in that jungle. And yeah, DIY just getting run out. I'm going to have the turnaround with old 11 here and force Sweden Strong back. But yeah, usually that Observer Ward is in the medium camp to block the camp from Chen and give vision. But it was outside of the camp and it still gets dewarded. So a little unusual there from Extreme Gaming. Yeah, maybe this is something Navi have kind of studied or seen that ward before. But definitely nice that they can get that early deward off. And... Lane swaps. Yeah, they are <laughs> swapping. Interesting. This is... Not what I necessarily ex expect. I feel like if you're Navi, you may have just been happy to settle for it. But yeah, they're going to make sure that they get that Timbersaw in the lane they want it, dealing with those Naga and Naga illusions. Yeah, and Sweden Strong didn't go for boots, so no lane dragging from the clockwork. On PYW up top, it's going to drag the wave away from Laze. Give Chen some experience and gold under the tower. Not, not the ideal situation, but Solo is going to be pretty happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> Getting these last hits, he's already level two. Not sure. Yeah, Laser's like, uh, do I stay with this wave here? He's actually it's TPing it. bottom. Interesting. They've already, I guess they've already seen the Naga TP yeah. down there, so they immediately swap their lanes out and put the yeah. TB back up top. Yeah, everyone's TPing, so this is, means Navi get the lanes they want. Both sides don't have TPs all of a sudden, but I guess the support's the ones who don't have to move, so. Maybe Extreme Gaming feel like with this, the supports they've got in these lanes that they can kind of, kind of still do okay here. And it feels like a little unusual from the Terror Blade as well, going Metamorphosis level 1. I feel like we've seen Reflection just be that a spammable spell. You go for Meta at level 2. And he wanted to secure some early last hits before transitioning back up to top. Well, the one lane we haven't seen too much action from or talked about is this mid lane. SF vs Death Prophet. I, 
definitely agree with what you were saying. It's not quite as SF favorite as it once was. Uh, Death Prophet does have the tools to kind of stick around in lane and, you know, heal back up with those runes. So I don't think we'll see too much action there until these supports start rotating. Yeah, especially with Boots on Paparazzi. He foregoes the early Blink Rush. Boots to get away from Razors. Nice handy tool to have. Yeah. And then down bottom, Lou, 13-3 on this Naga. Having a pretty good time so far. Lays with three last hits on this Timbersaw. Really... Yeah. Really having some difficulties even getting to the wave. You see the CS on the dire sign, you're like, oh yeah, they're, you know, they're doing okay, but then you're right, wait a second, it's Chen with 10 last hits. <laughs> TP and Timber both not getting any farm so far, so. And the cookie forward. Good bit of damage onto Lays. Doesn't have reactive armor. Went for this 1 1 yeah. 0 build to try and get damage out. And he's going to have to salve back up. Being up an under leveled Timber is not a good feeling. It's, it's definitely not. He is. There's a feast or famine here, and that's for sure. Yeah. That's where all these lane swaps, like, a lot of these supports got experience and gold. Like, Clockwork's almost a full level ahead of Timbersaw, and you look at the heroes that are getting under-leveled, under it's heroes like Timber who want to be ahead when it comes to the lane. Yeah, Naga leading out with the last hits. Feels very good for Extreme. You do have that silver lining of no one starting to handle this mid lane. 21-3, pulling out a hand of the DP. Going to be uh, a couple of waves ahead with this fresh one arriving at this tower now as well. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. We end up with the lanes like you'd expect, standard lanes, but it didn't start that way. And it's the lanes that are better for Na'Vi, but because of all the swaps, something just kind of went amiss in the early game and has put them on the back foot. They're going to need Solo's Chen to like have a bigger impact because you got all these early levels in farm, but Chen just is kind of this passive lane securing hero these days to some extent. So there's not a whole lot Chen can easily do. And they're still TPing. They TP. They're yeah. in force. Yeah, VTune doesn't have one. Like, that's the thing. You don't get free TPs unless you're feeding, and no one's died. <laughs> no, he doesn't want to buy a TP. He wants to buy stats and boots and yeah. stuff. He's got a but TP yeah, I... on his courier now, but he's got to bring it out. So it could be some time before he can lane swap again. Yeah, I, I realized during the draft it might, might have seemed or sounded weird when, when you were talking about passive heroes, and I brought up the Chen. Because previously, Chen has been an active laning hero, grabbing creeps and dominating lanes. But I think the past several months, even the past year, he's kind of been an AFK farm to mech kind of hero. He goes jungle, gets mech, and that's his job. Yeah, Definitely he's going to passive one. Want to have heroes to kind of play around them and push with, but you've got these kind of three cores that all want to farm a bit there. He's probably wishing he had the death profit on his team, but we'll see. For now, they are stabiliz stabilizing these lanes a bit. V tune. Is catching up on the farm when it comes to this top lane. Has brought the TP out. I'm curious to see if he does go for that that lane swap again. Oh, yeah, might be a little, a little late now. Yeah, his courier keeps it alive, and he's maybe going maybe to get this kill on PYW. And yeah, with a reflection on him, chasing Nyx into the trees. P lane has brought the TP out. I'm curious to see if he does go for that that lane swap again. Oh, yeah, might be a little, a little late now. Yeah, his courier keeps it alive, and he's maybe going maybe gonna to get this kill on PYW. And yeah, with a reflection on him. Chasing Nyx into the trees, PYW. Can he can he TP out here? He's gonna try and juke around, but he's found by V Tune. Oh, huge kill That's for first blood. there. Yeah. yeah, first blood for him. Took a while to get there, but five and a half minutes in, and TP oh, gets the kill. Oh, no one misses his first couple of raises. They were trying to get in there with Sweden Strong as well. As bottom lane lays, he's hunted down by Old Levin, and the scatter blast from DY will secure it. Paparazzi mid looked like he was in a, a real spooky situation, but speedy enough with, what, 330 move speed to get away from the Shadow Fiend of no one. Yeah, and he has that high ground ward in the mid lane, so he sees this clockwork coming, which is also why Extreme Gaming are able to dive down bottom. They know the clockwork's missing. They know he's not going to kind of counterplay it, so some good vision enabling them to both avoid the gank on mid and also get a kill down bottom. No one sees PYW coming across the D ward. Nyx Assassin always causing problems. Just moving forward. Getting some vision down of his own in that top dire jungle as well. And no one now relegated to jungling. That large camp, all he can claim because he's so afraid of the Nyx lurking. Yeah. Tricky position to be in. I mean, the haste of Death Prophet is just the, the nightmare rune. So until that one kind of expires, it, it isn't really a situation where he wants to play this mid lane. He's going to give it to the Chen. He's probably telling Sol, yeah, you go defend this one. You may get killed, but we need somebody here, right? Oh, more gold, more experience for Solo. Yeah. <laughs> or his 17 last hits, needs more. He's ahead of the timber on net worth. That's, he's gonna, that's pretty crazy. He's gonna have a seven and a half minute mech or something, like eight minute mech here for the Chen. Yep. He's 
no, uh, nobody is defending or playing mid lane on the dire side. That's the problem with power runes on certain heroes. And that prophet's just gonna get bored and say, "Okay, no one's playing mid. I'll just I'll take this tower then." Free tower. Ah, yeah. DYW as well as DY here to fight as well. That's a tier one mid. That's not one of these kind of, yeah, you know, it's a side lane tower, not so great. The mid tower going to give them full access into both jungles and put a lot of pressure on the Na'Vi when it and comes to Naga securing their team. farm. Yeah. Like you take towers early and you've got this Naga who's then cutting waves and split pushing. Down bottom, old 11. He's going to turn and fight into Sweden strong, but trapped inside those cogs, he's done for. A battery assault secures it thanks to V-Tune coming down here with his metamorphosis. Yep. Oh, that's such a good point though about the Naga. It, it just feels like Lou is going to get insanely farmed this game when it comes to like, basically farming out all of this mid and top side of the map. TB can kind of do the same thing down bottom a bit, especially the way Na'Vi have rotated all their supports down there. So at least Na'Vi kind of understanding that oh, no know, one. they need to set this TB up. Requiem, Carapaste, okay. the Spirit Siphon still going, gets a raise out onto PYW. There's an Invis room, but he doesn't want to go for it. Oh, Paparazzi's going to keep Ooh. chasing. No one does get the kill. And thanks to his wand and still holding a fairy fire, yeah, yeah, he survives. That was bold from no one. He's like, I could get this room, but screw it. I'm going to take this kill. And you know, he knew he wasn't really in any danger there. So great play from the SF. And that now allows Na'Vi to move on to tier one bottom themselves. TB chipping away at it should be easy for them to claim. And as far as this game goes, the main thing that hasn't gone according to plan for Navi, Navi is just lace this game on this Timbersaw. If he can kind of, right. you know, get some catch-up time, which he's, he's going to have a lot of alone time. He's on Naga duty. He's just going to be camping top, trying not to die, and trying to de-push against this Naga Siren. So uh, at some point, you know, this Timber is going to be able to have an impact on this game. Yeah, just bodyguard that tower for as long as you can. Yep. Try and stop the wave cutting from Lou, but he's doing well with his Illusion Micro. And they can't really kill him until, I'd say, Snapfire level 6. I think that's really the main way Timber dies at this point. Speaking of Snapfire, Hurricane back in to the Cogs of Sweden Strong. Does get the cookie out. And Paparazzi with PYW will turn back onto Na'Vi and stop the aggressors in their tracks. It's a little support kill here, but... Stream Gaming finally decide they've had enough of this TB just farming out their entire jungle, so they bring enough heroes to repel Na'Vi away, but some farm to fall back to in the Ancients here. The big issue for Na'Vi is just like, is there enough farm to go around? TB, SF, Timber, three heroes that want a lot of it. Chen also, like, you know, you kind of end up farming quite a bit on Chen when you're in the jungle here, but it does feel like Solus can be the guy who just has to push out lanes and maybe put his life on the line a little bit, but Extreme Gaming, they're not interested in Chen. They want to kill these cores. This smoke up to the top lane. They have their eyes set on this Timbersaw. Yeah, these two wards, so vital for them. The one in the jungle saw the SF and they knew he was retreating. So the lane ward top gives the vision onto the Timbersaw as he, oh, PYW tries to carapace the Chakra and will get it done in the end. Thanks to old 11 with the bash there as well. And Paparazzi using Exo just to get on top of this tier one tower. Navi need to swiftly move elsewhere. Find room on the map for your TB. And that's the problem with these greedy drafts is when your opponents make a play like this with exorcism and stuff, there's no real response. Like, you can't trade towers, you're just get trading a little bit of farm elsewhere, but you're not trading favorably because they make that play with four heroes while Naga's, you know, farming the entire map plus jungle. So um, it just feels like all the moves Extreme Gaming can make are a little bit more efficient. They get to take towers plus find these key kills on cores while they maintain a pretty equal farm distribution, or at least an equal farm compared to the Na'Vi cores. Yeah, I guess if you're feeling comfortable with you know, Naga Riptide and the Corrosive Haze of Slaughter to be that minus armor strat against your TB, your, your Timber Sort, just get them the items and levels they need. You feel good about it. And even Paparazzi just rushing straight into BKB. Knows that he's the tempo hero here, and Naga is going to be soaking up a lot of this farm on the map. While Slaughter going Echo Saber this time around, rather than that Mask yeah. of Madness we saw previously. I think, I guess, probably just because of TB in this game, I think you can't really expect to be able to run in against a TB who is just going to meta and destroy you. Right now, Navi feel like they've hit a pretty strong timing. The Chen Mech, the TB meta with a Yashin. They want to pressure this T1 mid tower. Extreme looking to respond and snare the Terror Blade. Missed the stun though. PYW now inside the cogs. Trapped in the cage as Lays will arrive with a Chakram to turn them away. 
Tier 1 still standing tall, but in comes Laser and Sweden Strong with a hookshot on Paparazzi. The Hand of God keeps them topped up and healed, but these kisses. Mortimer zones them out with the artillery, and PYW always getting cookied away and saved. Old 11 on the run away, and Laser just keeps on chasing forward and misses his chakra. Luckily for him, because the carapace was going to be there from PYW. Oh, it's okay. DG room now, bottom as well. Just a casual zero for zero team fight where like 30 <laughs> spells were used. Kalster, where's the team fight recap? <laughs> well, there's the win rate probability 53 to 47. We, we, we get something. Uh, that was, yeah, no one died. There was a, there was a, lot, a lot that went down, but <laughs> I mean, there's that every team. Sorry? It was like every old, I guess, Sandy oh, yeah. got used, and Exo yes. was coming off cooldown, but everything else, yeah. Yeah, and Paparazzi got low, but Navi got low, but then they had the Chen Mech plus Hand of God. Some good disengages from the Nyx Assassin, and yeah. Wasn't even like a Song of the Siren or anything to kind of break things up. It was just a good old-fashioned cast your spells and run away. That's not even leveled up, is it? No song for, for Lou. 4-1-4 four, four build. Has he, has he taken stats or is he holding a point? He's level 10. Oh, he's got the talent. Of course he has. A 30 Riptide damage. On back to a, a period of calm. Get your farm in. And Solo's going to have his Vlad's pretty soon on this gen. And no one. A similar story to Paparazzi, just going straight for this BKB to hit that early to mid-game timing. 15, 16 minutes in. Yeah, I think he knows. He's got this TB on his team. He can't go too greedy. Plus the Timber. Like, Timber is just this hero that there isn't really like a selfless Timber build or like a team-oriented one. At least not like any of that feel good to go. So no one's job. BKB plus, he had Blink queued up earlier. I'm curious to see if he goes back for that, but very likely we see some kind of more spellcaster build out of him. Utilizing the magic damage from these raises a bit more. Mm, PYW with oh, the kisses. kisses. The pairing of the two supports, v yep. Sunder onto no one, buys a bit of time for the TB to escape. While in the back, Sweden Strong gonna get good cogs on toward the lever, allowing Lays to shred through him with a Chakram. Sweden Strong though, unable to finish the job. Slardos out, the reflection comes, but Terra Blade just holding high ground, watching his teammates die. Na'Vi looking to escape now, but Lays has the corrosive haze on him. DY and Paparazzi tracking back to find this Timber Sword. Yeah, yeah, you're right, on cooldown for 40 seconds. He's going to go back in aggressively, though. He wants all 11 <laughs> try and get a kill before he dies. He knew he's, it was coming. Yeah. He saw the writing on the wall. He's like, I'll try to bring one down with me. But, I mean, just a tough fight for Navi to take because the, the TBs use Sunder on the, on the Shadow Fiend there. So both TB and SF ended up pretty low. Like, I think SF was on 25%. TB was on half health. So their two highest damage cores can't really take that fight. Whereas the rest of those, the Navi supports were kind of like, oh, we got to run in and, you know, help out, help out our buddy. But uh, the end result was extreme gaming, getting a few kills and they're not done solo. Yeah. In some trouble. Old 11 going for the solo kill. Right, does he have a hurricane to, to push people around? He's, he's turning and trying to fight. Okay. Does get the hurricane, but doesn't survive in the end. He gets the solo kill, but he also doesn't get the solo kill. Yeah. <laughs> help came in from DUI. And that, again, just coming back to that previous fight, that was just two supports from, from Extreme, right? The Nyx and the Snapfire, they set it up, yep. and they basically finished off the fight themselves. Yeah, I feel like yeah, this Snapfire pick is going to be very impactful this game. I mean, paired with the Nyx we've talked so much about, but just having these two heroes, that, especially at this stage of the game, pre-BKB, it's going to be a different story once Na'Vi managed to get enough farm, get BKB on their two big cores. Timber gets some items, but we're a bit of a ways off from that. This Timber is still relatively poor for the time being. Yeah, sat below 6,000 net worth. Slardar's finished off his Echo Saber and now halfway to Blink. Yeah, you were right. We're going to see Blink Hex on the Shadow Fiend, it looks like. No one going for a bit of utility there. Seems good. Gives them a, a way to kill some of these heroes they otherwise wouldn't. Like, you, know, you jump on the Naga, for, for example, but... There isn't a whole lot of save when it comes to the extreme gaming lineup, so let's see if it, it pays off. That's weird and strong. Right place, right time. And breaks the smoke on XG. That's Invis Rune paying off big time for him as, as low. And he goes in for the Timber Saw and snare into Kisses, cancelled out a little bit by the Yules, but he can't chain away. He gets caught out by PYW when he lands. Uh, the Carapace also catching the clock. Nicely done off the back of the Cogs. 
Uh, charging forward, Swedenstrong just couldn't really find a good cogs or hook shot there. He didn't see the snap fire, so he couldn't cancel the kisses. And yeah, even with a Yule Scepter, Timber just goes down there and extreme gaming. They want to defend down bottom here. They're going to see what pickoffs they can find. All 11 just TPs in. He's going to be charging forward, looking for any kills here. But even just clearing Navi out of their jungle, when Navi have such a greedy farm oriented draft, you want to try and just push them away from these pockets of farm on the map. Yeah, close that net in around them. Don't let little fishies get any food. Uh, defend that tier one mid as well. As it sat around 100 health. Another another round from Na'Vi. Could come in and finish it off. It's incredibly scary though. Playing into the team fight of extreme that they've got. And we're going to have a slot up link very shortly as well. Just hit 2,000 gold saved up. Uh, it looks like they want to try and smoke out of mid. Maybe even angle towards Ancients where you, you're probably pretty sure VTune is camping right now. 15 seconds. This is the time you want to go if you go at all, right? Just before the respawn timer. Yeah. It seems like they're going to miss it or at least not prioritize it for now. Scotty TB, though, so it does feel like Navi may be about ready to take a team fight. I think the big thing is going to be can this clockwork get on top of someone like the Snapfire and prevent the Mortimer kisses? Because playing without BKB and the magic damage can be pretty brutal for them. Nice. Something I always... You know, kind of 11 jump. here. And they get the catch with a hook shot in. Straight onto the Slardar. Slow him down with the Scardi. A lot of damage from this Terra Blade. Make short work of him. Yep. And Radiant even scanning Roshan. They weren't sure where Na'Vi were coming from. Yeah, they didn't quite have the right read on that one. And importantly for Na'Vi, they had some good vision to find the Slardar there. It was Metamorphosis, but there is a decent amount of farm down here to push out the wave as well as farm out this jungle. So don't think Vtune will mind too much having committed the Metamorphosis, while the rest of his team push forward aggressively towards this mid lane. They're looking for a follow-up fight here. Yeah, I, I mean, I look at this Na'Vi draft, and uh, in the back of my head, I think they don't have enough team fight to match up against the extreme, but I, I often think of Requiem as just a damage spell, but the, the fear mm. from it, especially against a hero like Naga, who doesn't want to buy BKB, could be massively valuable from Na'Vi. Yeah. If no one gets this blink BKB Requiem onto someone, that, that could be fight winning. And just over the course of a fight, you're going to add up a lot of raises on the hero like Naga. Naga never really pressures the SF too much, but... Fortunately for Na'Vi, playing this bottom side of the map, there is a... They do a vision up top, but without Metamorphosis, this Roche is likely not going to be contested here. It's just dying so fast to all the minus armor. Yeah, a little Shredder, Corrosive Haze, Riptide. So much minus armor takes him down quickly. And now you've got Aegis on loot. Look at that graph bouncing up and down all over the place. And net worth came back down to zero. Jump back up a little bit though for Extreme after taking that Roshan. It's ever so slightly favoring the Extreme Gaming draft when it comes to the, the win probability, but late game TB, not something to be underestimated. Rather jump in onto Lays. Old Levin, Loom with the kisses landing in top. I do have the stun there from PYW, that Yule Scepter. Timbersaw bought it, think it's going to give him safety, but all it's done is set up for these Impales. Yeah. And he's got a Lotus queued up, but I don't think that really solves his problem that, problems either. Like, the same thing is going to happen. Even with the Lotus, almost feels like he's going to need, like, some kind of BKB or just, like, yeah. a ton of health, but I, I wouldn't mind just seeing straight BKB at this point. Yeah, I mean, we've seen from these Timbers, you said there's no real way to play him as a selfless hero. The, the Kaya Sanj build, the BKBs, might have been a, a better option, but what, what, what's done is done. He's built the Yules. Let's see if he can utilize it further on. At, at this point, we're seeing that like when Navi have just kind of assigned him to farm the dangerous parts of the map, try and keep this top lane pushed out, delay the Naga push, while the rest of our team has a good game. Like Solo's Chen is getting super farmed and pushing out a lot of these lanes. TB and SF are getting full kind of free farm over the jungle, so it seems like a kind of almost decision that Na'Vi have made to kind of just give Lays like the worst game out of their three fours. Was it, was it last pick Timber? Like actual last pick? Uh, I mean, they, they picked yes, it into the Knicks anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. picked it. Very final pick of the draft. So yeah, I don't not... know if that was their, I, surely it wasn't their initial plan, but once these lanes went kind of poorly, I think Navi just recognized, like, hey, somebody has to be sacrificed to have a, you know, ha somebody has to have a bad game at this point. It's not the TB and it's not the SF. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's not the Chen. No, Solo's uh, from minute zero been having a, a great time this game. Yeah, 73 last hits on a Chen.
It's going to be record breaking at this point. <laughs> it is very, very high up there. Almost has the, the Wraith pack completed even. Extreme Gaming pushing things out in this bottom lane. They've still got two minutes left on this Aegis, so they're trying to clear out all these outer towers and really just pressure the jungle, take over as much farm as they can. Na'Vi though, you know, they, every time they read these movements, they're just like, okay, you come bottom, we'll go send SF mid, send TP top maybe. Just bottle a DD keep away. Yeah. Ooh, that's sexy. There we go, Na'Vi. Maybe can make something off of this. Yeah. I see what they do. I mean, there's Radiant Vision, top lane ward, and uh, a sneaky little one between the top jungle and the base. Yeah. They could see any kind of deep smoke like that. That one in particular near where, yeah, we see there where the Terror Blade's heading. That's, that's a smoke spot. They're going high ground. Or at least poking high ground. I think they're just trying to force some TPs back here. Actually pushing high ground, even with exorcism, is very challenging at this point in the game. 22 minutes in against a very farm TP. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we'll smoke up off the back of this now. Get some use out of that DD Terror Blade. Wraith Pact is almost ready for Chen, just needs to get to the secret shop to finish it off. That'll help their team fights tremendously against this Naga DP. You smoke here. Clockwork and SF leading the charge, looking for that hookshot Requiem combo. Old Levin feels it coming. He hits the Mud Golem once and runs away. Hits another creep once and <laughs> runs away. They see this one coming. Even leaves the haze on the, the Warpine Raider, but he's headed as far away as possible. Wants to kind of play around his teammates now. Yeah, one minute left on Aegis. Lou's still able to front line a little bit here. As they do get a catch on the timber saw. Blue and Old Levin, the hook shot in though. Two man stun. Lee's about to die. Lotus Orb's up, but doesn't get the Yules off. He's gone. And so yeah. Sweden strong. Two quick kills for Extreme. I think after the last few deaths, he's like, okay, I'm just going to stop using myself because it sets up Nick stuns. But considering the Clockwork came in to try and cast some spells, he should have just used the Yules there. But Navi do get the bump tier two tower, but they may pay the price here as Slada has rotated in. Yeah, finding Chen down south. And I ideal is this Timber Saw. You want to be using that kind of chain Yules combo. And you do slip away, get out of the stuns, but it's, it's just so difficult against Nyx, Slardar, Snapfire, long range initiation and damage from them all. Yeah, the fact they have so much pick off is really paying dividends for Extreme Gaming. They're able to farm the map with Naga, keep all these lanes pushed out, and then anytime Navi try and counteract it with split push down like this bottom lane pri primarily, they're able to hunt heroes down. Nyx Vendetta, Slaughter just teeping in with his Blink Dagger, and once like, Slaughter has a BKB, suddenly there's not really any kind of counter plays you can make to it. And shortly we're going to have Halberd done on the Death Prophet. Such a valuable item against Terror Blade and Shadow Fiend. Get the Disarm onto them when they're in ranged mode. Just allow that Naga Siren to keep pushing these illusions forward. She's got her heart on top of the Scardi Manta. And again, Lou going for this Radiance oh as a, a later item. Very useful against the TB and his illusions. Yeah. That is a farmed Naga Siren. And yeah, Radiance is going to... I think recognizing how annoying it is to have all these lanes shoved out, the Radiance is going to help with that. But yeah, also help with the TB illusions. Definitely not your typical Naga build, but makes sense given that you are playing into the TB. Yeah, it's, it's been... Interesting to see this shift of Naga over the past I don't know, two years, I guess. Away from Diffusal Blade into like the... We saw Sumail when he was playing it just go for Scardi Rush. Even uh, skipping out on Manta from time to time. And yeah, there were periods where there was like these Nagas going kill kill builds too with like Orchids, the, the orchids? and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Aghanims was a thing for a while, so... Definitely a hero that has a lot of different itemization. Oh, no one. Oh. Got the BKB up, but these hey, bashes... Okay. Old 11. He's got his number. And Sweden yep. is strong. He missed out on the hook shot because of the movement away, and no one left stranded while PYW gets the stun on the clockwork to close it out. Yeah. Extreme gaming. They reclaim their bottom jungle again. It just feels like the story of this game. Like, two to three Navi heroes farming while the other two get picked off somewhere on the map because they just. All their draft can do kind of is, is farm, and these three cores are going to be farming in different places, and somebody's going to die. You can't. Like, perfect. Map awareness just doesn't exist, and like the greedier your draft, the greedy you have to be with your farming patterns. And extreme gaming are just doing a great job punishing it with all these pickoffs. And now, final outer tower. Tier two got exorcism too. They make a high easy. ground. You're right. We'll see. There's 
bit early, maybe. Probably thinking next Roshan at least. So yeah, they've got 40 seconds for an early spawn, so. Oh, I Seth gonna be spawning with very few Necromastery stacks up. Oh yeah, the outpost is still able to be claimed up top, so that's where XG head first instead. I guess some D wards around this jungle area as well, so the map becomes very dark for Na'Vi now. It looks like they're drawing the line to head down towards bottom lane, push that wave out and play into that bot. That means they're going to relinquish control over the Roche pit and rely on these rocket flares of Clockwork just to try and keep the vision. I just don't think they have the team fighting heroes to contest Roche. Even if they saw Roche and had respawned if, and saw Extreme Gaming in the pit, can they stop it? Extreme Gaming are just playing hunter mode right now. They just keep using their outposts, coming in, trying to see what they can find. But Navi, so fast. you want to take this fight. I mean, Sweden's strongest jumped on the heels from Solo. The hook shot back in. Kisses launched out in towards the cogs. And old Levin getting cookied around. Sweden strong still alive somehow. And V2 did what was meta for this, but old Levin still alive. Gold and shiny God Slot, Aris Paparazzi and Lou both come back in. Old Levin down to Lays in the back as TB disarmed, being focused on. But he's got his BKB up now as the song trying to focus him down. He's going to get the Sunder down though. Lou down to low HP and V2 may be able to turn and continue fighting. Lays chaining forward and Extreme Gaming now the ones on the run. Someone else BKB'd. That charging forward, Lays gets the Yules, catch on to Nargisar, and no one's the one with the BKB up as they do get him on top of Lou, but no real stuns or catch to follow yeah. through. Even with the Clockwork buying back, it, you know, he doesn't have Hookshot anymore. They Without the, the lockdown, like, heroes like SF and TB, you know, TB needs, like, a he needs a damage environment. He needs his, like, you know, these bubble spells, or at least, you know, stuns to lock people in place, and Nyx Assassin type hero... Everybody's just kind of kiting him there as, you know, as much damage as Vtune did in that fight. And it was a lot. Almost 6,000 hero damage just himself. He, he can't actually finish anyone off. <laughs> yeah, spreading all that damage very wide. That's a, a nice idea there, I think, by Lou to use that song, isolate the TB while he was BKB'd up, but it just allows him to sunder you and get yeah. back to full health. Oh, so, Shan. Great job finding the, the Naga for the sunder, but... It was never in too much danger. It's one of those fights where if, you know, Timber was maybe a bit more farmed or higher level, like, that's where, that's where Laze is like, you know, you'd love your Timber to be able to clean up a couple of those kills there, because he's the one here who can kind of chase people down using the Timber Chain, the Yule Scepter and whatnot, but he really needs that plus one item in order to maybe get to that point where he's a real threat. Oh, no one. Oh, hey. oh blinks. Can they find any stragglers here, Lays? He's gonna get spotted by PYW. A Yules of his own will land the stun in, get the chain disables, and even the kisses for good measure. Timber, 500 health, another Yules up. The carapace will be there to stop the timber chain away. So taking control of the outpost, and more importantly, Roshan now for extreme gaming. I don't think there's any stopping this Rosh. Navi have smoked though. They want to try and take this fight here. Metamorphosis up in 10 seconds time, so. Nice. That's too slow, isn't it? it it's got to be, but they're still Roche. they're going to be in a really dangerous position where a fight may break out. And PYW and Paparazzi trying to break vision. No one is in with the BKB Requiem. Gets the damage onto PYW. Old 11 yeah, nearly Gingling. dead as well. Feared up and about to drop. No one gets a double kill. Clears them up as V-Tune. Oh, the song from Lou. The reset buttons hit. Oh. An extreme gaming. They get the Aegis. They get the hell out. Yeah, the big item there. Arcane Rune plus Arcane Blink. No one's Requiem came... He was still winding up his arms and it's shooting out. <laughs> the way the, the cast animations work with some of the, 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 arcane, the arcane blink, it was just insane there. No one dished out a huge amount of damage. And that's the first fight we've really felt the big SF impact there. As this arcane blink is such a big pickup for him. Doesn't that BKP though? Could be in some trouble here in the mid lane. Yeah, Lou with DY straight back in on oh top boy, of Oh boy, he just... Hey, gets demolished. Oh. Oh. Very quickly dispatched with by Lou. Classic curse strike in there. He just stuck around <laughs> a bit too long and maybe. Oh, have you done it to him? Yeah. I mean great job by Extreme Gaming reckoning, hey, this guy's BKB shouldn't be upright. And now PYW has found the starting stun onto Sweden Strong. Lou, the Naga Siren, 307, wandering up to high ground. And easy as you like, Extreme looking to break the base of Navi. Even if SF buys back, doesn't have the full souls, no buyback on the clockwork, but doesn't look like... I mean, Lou's still thinking high ground. None of his teammates are here, but I mean, he's a Naga Siren, and 
Doesn't look like he's in any danger whatsoever. Just happy to solo push while his teammates ferry along the creep wave, making sure they can break this backdoor protection and there's no no shenanigans. Ah, kill off the Wraith Pact with your illusions. Contend with a Chen and his army. Glyph there from Na'Vi, but they jump in with the kisses. Old Eleven finds the stun onto the Timber Saw, and they've got the chain disables from Paparazzi and PYW to bring down Lays. Yeah. He does have buyback, but oh yeah, he's, he's gonna have to. He pops it immediately. The barracks are cracked wide open now, though, as Lou opening up on the buildings in this dire base gets the ensnare. PYW chain stuns there, carapace up as well, but no one's gonna turn with his BKB. Lou. Sings the song of his people, tries to fight into V2, and expending the BKBs of Na'Vi, and maybe looking for the second round of fighting. Off the glyph to delay things here, they've still got a lot of time on this Aegis, so... Doesn't seem like Lu has any interest in backing off, and Paparazzi, even without Exorcism, still back him up a little bit here. Finally, the push seems to have been repelled here, as they're going to TP themselves out of there. Melee Rax has been defended. And Na'Vi are going to get a little bit of breathing room here. A little bit, yeah. I mean, uh, 200 health left on that melee barracks, very close to death. Exo on cooldown for 80 seconds, no song for 35, no kisses for 40, so Extreme Gaming lacking a lot of their team fight abilities right now. So maybe a chance for Na'Vi to hold the high ground, play under their vision, and get a fight on their terms. But they're on the run, and they're getting caught out. While they look to retreat, PYW with Paparazzi trying to aim for this Timber Saw, and Snare comes and bounces back towards the Naga. Is that a sight of voice up for her as well? Is, is it a little piggy, the Timber Saw? She just bought it, yeah. It's getting caught out, yeah, Lou. I mean, I'm trying to click on the actual hero. The illusions don't have it, but the, the, the hero does. Yeah, just swoops by the secret shop, like, oh yeah, I'll buy a hex, casual. Still has 2.5k gold, and, you know, it was a little bit of breathing room, but. It wasn't long, Extreme Gaming, they're back for round two, ready to finish off this melee racks, and this time around, I don't think there's any defending it, as there's no glyph, and they'll get at least one lane here. They're going to swing bottom as well, so they're looking for that second lane, and Na'Vi, pressure's on them to do something to defend this. Yeah, the die back on this Timber Saw, dead for 50. I mean, no one is trying to farm up his souls. Once level get 20. Get a little closer to the Scythe of Ice. Yeah, he's got level 20 now, that's the main thing he was looking for there. We'll see if he comes back for a fight, but this melee Rax may just already be dead before he even has a chance to fight. He's TPing in there. Yep. A hook shot in. No one has the Requiem. They're trying to get old Levin and they'll find him quickly. Paparazzi and Lou still here fighting behind the barracks. Song and Kisses overlap though. Not synchronized there Cancels between Lou the and DY, but they do get a jump in. No one in trouble. The SF. Hand of God, the heels from Solo. He's Ogre Seal towing him and jumping around away from danger. They've got Yules now on TB to hold him back. Immediately disarmed as well, v -Tune. Really struggling to stick on someone and do the damage while Lou has free reign. Kills the clock. 40 seconds without Sweden Strong and another set of barracks. Claimed up by Extreme Gaming. Yeah. Like, even with the, the meta TB there and the, the SF doing all the damage you can, like, they've got a good team fight on Na'Vi, but they have to kind of poke and prod and disengage, and as soon as you disengage, Death Prophet and Naga are like, okay, you don't want to fight us, we'll just hit your buildings and take the racks and walk out. So, Extreme Gaming don't have to get those kills in order to get the lane of racks, and they're going to now maybe pin their eyes on this top lane as well. Potential Roshan oh. three minutes away, so it may be a scenario where they don't go for the Mega Creeps quite yet, but... Given that they can do this slow siege with Naga Siren, it's very safe to just poke at Navi's base here. That, that was almost a, a disaster. TB had his butterfly components on the courier and just oh. about got the glyph on it. He got the courier protection as Paparazzi was one hit away from denying that item because he's bought out. He doesn't have buyback on TB. Unfortunately, there's no meta. He used it for bottom lane, which is a big part right. of why Extreme Gaming I think they can get the mega creeps here in the top lane. Just keep on going. Cutting away, carving into this dire base. And Vitune, he's even struggling to contend with Naga Illusions. Needing oh. lays to whirling death and down. And old 11 tried there with the initiation, but no one has Sweden Strong. It's got Refresher. Requiem. They do Whoa, he move in backwards. to kill him off, but the song is going to stop them all in their tracks. They can't follow through. And now Extreme Gaming, they've got the turnaround play with the kisses in. They'll kill off the clockwork. Lays and no one on the run. Back to Fountain you go. Got another Requiem. Navi, hold on. 
He's gonna have to find a big Requiem here, but without Hookshot, it's so hard to find a good initiation. I think he blinked backwards on accident. I think he double-clicked his blink that fight. He oh, no. refreshed and then blinked backwards and started to channel Requiem before he realized, oh crap, I gotta cancel this because he meant to blink forward, I wanna say. Oh, no. That's oh, rough for Na'Vi. I mean, they hold on to this last lane of barracks, but the way these team fights are going, I, it's, I, I, I struggle to call it a team fight from Na'Vi. They're just being run at consistently by Extreme, and there's no response. Nope. They do hold this last lane of racks, but that's time for Extreme to once again go for a little reset. If they want to, they can wait for Roshan, but they're just enjoying and finding so much value out of keeping Na'Vi in their base penned up keeping the pressure on, continuing to poke at these buildings with Naga Illusions. It's the low risk push. Over time, this tower will eventually go down. I'll try and keep my keep my third eye on the stream, watching it back for that blink play. A real, real tragedy for Na'Vi as now they're hemmed back in their base, trying to bunker down, hold on to what they've got. Extreme gaming. 20 seconds for Fastborn and Roche, and they've got two Dire Wards in... The, uh, sorry, one Radiant Ward up in this base, two Dire Wards in the base from Na'Vi to try and give what little vision to team fight around that they can. Yep. TV's almost got the Daedalus, getting every little bit of damage. This is one of these games where there's no saving for buyback if you're in Na'Vi shoes. You buy every item you can get. You can't afford to... Uh, especially on your core, is like that one damage item that maybe is going to help you finish off one of these kills, but... It's just so hard. Naga... Six slotted at this point, not even playing with the boots. Has the trickster cloak as well for extra magic resistance and evasion. Such a good item for Naga to get, particularly playing into this magic damage SF. Unkillable. Yeah. Absolutely unkillable. 509, 36,000 net worth. Stellar performance from Lou yet again. Navi's going to need a really big team fight off of this refresher on Shadow Fiend. One or two big fights, and you know, your Timber maybe gets some good farm, gets up an Aghanim Scepter, Shivas gets level like 20 and stuff, but that's it just feels like they're a long way off that, and Extreme Gaming are just posturing around Roche. They left the gem in the pit to give them some vision. Does get scattered by Navi, but we'll see this Roshan in 50 seconds' time. Uh, is the third Roche now? The second? Oh, oh I'm losing track the way, <laughs> the way these games are going. Feels I like second, second Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's second Roche. Yeah, we're 40 minutes in. A lot of split push in and map control, but not too many Roches taken. And Radiant still with that vision up in the base as Na'Vi smoke in towards them. High ground ward there for Extreme as well. And they're smoking to try and play back into it. Reverse the rolls here as Na'Vi... Don't get the D ward. As soon as these smokes break, it's going to be extreme with the advantage. Sweden strong jumped upon. There's old Levin with the initiation, and no one. Oh, did he get bashed? He moves around with his BKB up, but he can't requiem. He'll finally try to get it off now, but he's going to run away. He refreshes, but he dies. He's dead for 80. They buy back slot off, but extreme gaming. They've got this one. No mind for Sanders too. There's no way for TB to move. They're all gone for over a minute, and good game called. Oh, the V tune. They, you, you know, these guys had some back and forth with the tips earlier in this series, but I'm sure at this point, nothing but respect between these two teams. A perfectly executed last team fight, and I think just a, a great draft all, all in all. I think Navi just went a bit too far down the greedy path, thinking, okay, game three decider, you know, these games are going 50, 60 minutes. You still need ways to take team fights. Like, even if this game goes 60 minutes, I don't think Navi suddenly are going to, like, hit this item timing where, oh, yeah, now we're. Now we're good. Now we're online. Um, you need setup. You need stuns. You need team fight. You need these heroes that do, you know, the dirty jobs, the Nyx assassin, the snap fires, um, just chain stunning people, giving ways to start off fights. Uh, old 11 on slider. Like these are the ingredients that Navi's draft just kind of lacked. Yeah, I mean, looking at DY's scoreline, he's 3-0 and 20. Like, Snapfire unkilled, involved in, what, 23 out of 25 kills, 21 kill participation for Old 11, 20 for PYW. There's, these three heroes, the pairing or the trio of them, are just so beautiful to watch with that ability to jump, catch, kill, and force Na'Vi in those awkward positions to lose core heroes while they're farming, you know, out on the map elsewhere. You can see the scoreboard there as well, as Lou also unkilled in that game. 
Yeah, tough tough game for Navi to go out on. They had such a good group stage in the round robin, winning winning the group. But this this is a game they're just going to probably be kicking themselves a bit, putting together this draft, not really having the the ability to make plays, team fight, um, and just yeah, it's. It just got to this point where they were all in on like no one's SF maybe making these insane plays. Like it's easy to look at that last fight and be like, you know, he gets completely shut down by some bashes, but it's because of the situation they're in that he feels like he has to like push the limit of his hero and do more than you typically need to do on a Shadow Fiend. Yeah, so, so very difficult. And yeah, commiserations to Navi dropping out here in the lower bracket for the last chance qualifiers to TI. But congratulations to Extreme moving on to the next step, as I believe it's their next series where they play against Team Liquid here on this stream in that lower bracket to move that a little bit closer. And lower bracket quarterfinals up next, then the semifinals get one step further towards that qualification spot to TI, which means so much to all of these teams. Oh, yeah, things are, you know, we're getting, like you say, closer and closer. This whole entire last chance qualifier has been a tournament within a tournament. Um, it has been some very high tier quality Dota, um, but only two teams, end of the day, are going to make it into the actual TI main event. This is essentially, a, a, it is a qualifier. This is not yeah. part of TI. Um, so it's going to be heartbreak for majority of these other teams. Yeah, make sure you get a snack, a drink, and come back and stay tuned because Extreme Against Liquid is coming up on this stream with Nomad and Basekip right after this break.